Welcome everyone. My name is Heather Gallenbeck and I'm a member of the Kellogg Alumni Relations team. Thank you for joining us for the first event of our new virtual series, This is Kellogg. Today's presentation will last about 60 minutes. We encourage you to submit your questions at any time using the Q&A icon located at the bottom of your screen. We will address audience questions towards the end of the program. This webinar is being recorded and will be made available on Kellogg's YouTube channel next week. With that, I will turn it over to Dean Cornelli to get us started. Welcome, uh, Kellogg community. And I'm delighted that you're gonna join, you joined us tonight for the kickoff of our new virtual series, uh, This is Kellogg. This series will really focus on Kellogg's distinctive approach to leadership and innovation. And in the fall quarter, we are gonna focus on artificial intelligence and technology. And we are gonna have some of our amazing faculties and alumni speakers over three events. And tonight we are actually celebrating and discussing the launch of a new program, the MBAI. This is a joint program between Kellogg School of Management and the McCormick School of Engineering. Now we feel at Kellogg we have a long tradition of innovating in this space, in many spaces, but also in the space of the programs. We created decades ago the one year MBA and it was an absolute novelty and it still remains quite a unique program in the sense that few other business schools offer it. We created the JD MBA and the evening and weekend program long before they became commonplace. And then of course we have the Triple M, which not only also is a very distinctive program, but is also joined with the McCormick School. And therefore, we, the, the, the Triple M has been an amazing success. And therefore this has felt a bit for, uh, for uh, McCormick and Kellogg like a natural continuation of a partnership in a new direction, of, which is the MBAI. Because of that, I'm actually delighted to welcome uh, tonight uh, with me the Dean of the McCormick School, uh, Julio Tino. Welcome, Julio. Thank you, Francesca, and I'm excited to discuss our latest collaboration. So uh, let me start by saying a bit more about why we started the MBA program. And really is because by looking around, we identified a lack of a program that could really help leaders to, to know how to drive strategic innovation while navigating at the same time the complexities and nuances brought along by technology. Now, we, we all know AI, technology, analytics, they bring amazing prom promise, they, are, they belong to the future. And many firms have started projects in this area with great enthusiasm. And yet, to the surprise of many, actually many firms struggle to actually deliver or scale pro successful business project in this area. And the reason remains actually an inherent business uh, problem. There was a study in 2017 by Gardner that documented that 85% of this type of projects in AI and analytics by company actually fail. And if you want that, it, to me, when I first uh, heard about it, it was surprising. I, 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 I could see the difficulty, but I didn't expect such a high rate. Clearly, there's a need to understand more what is happening because also since 2017, we still see firm struggling. And because the challenge is a business program, but we are dealing with the technology, this is where we felt really a partnership between us could really help us in, in driving what, he, what, what was necessary. And that's how the MBAI the MBA was born. And it's an accelerated program 
It's five quarters. It is a fully blended curriculum and it has an experiential uh, component. And we think the graduates of the MBA I will be really well equipped to bridge exactly business, technology, analytics, uh, science, uh, which is, as I'm saying, more difficult than people thought. And they can find jobs in tech product management, project that or digital marketing. They can be entrepreneurs in this space. They became consultant in this space. There's a lot of space. I actually, however, like uh, to quote on this Eric um, Anderson, and you'll hear from him a bit later, who always says we are actually preparing people for jobs that don't exist. They are created by the companies right now. That is how we want to be the first in this space. Now, um, Julio, do you want to talk a bit more, tell it from your perspective, right? What makes the MBI so unique and special? Very glad to, Francesca. So for this program, Kellogg and McCormick a faculty collaborated, and this is essential, to develop a blended curriculum that combines business strategy with the complexities of emerging technologies. The program is designed for students with strong technology education and work experience who are interested in a focused curriculum covering machine learning, computational thinking, for business and how data science and artificial intelligence are driving innovation. It also provides a viewpoint into areas in which McCormick is at the leading edge in the US of frontiers of science and technology. Those areas would include synthetic biology, robotics and haptics, materials and bioelectronics and more. These courses will depend students' understanding of the independent relationship that exists between business and tech. The MBAI program also includes a, an experiential summer quarter that allows students to gain work experience and engage with industry leaders while continuing to take their classes. I would also like to address, um, Francesca made reference to this, uh, to the triple M, but I want to address the differences between triple M and MBAI, which is the triple M is our other marquee collaboration. As you know, triple M has been a hugely successful collaboration since its launch. It has also evolved from a program focused on operations to one that emphasizes now design thinking and innovation. The Triple M program awards students two degrees, currently an MBA and a Master's of Science in Design Innovation. The program is a deep dive, adding one additional quarter to the MBA and providing deep insights into design innovation. Importantly, I think it's important to stress that Triple M has evolved to be inclusive of students without STEM background, but with a passion for innovation. We see the MBAI program as a complement to Triple M, giving prospective students multiple paths to create impact in technology fields. So I guess, uh, Francesca, I probably should pass this on to you to introduce our faculty who will provide more context for our partnership in AI. Thank you, Julio. I, sh I should stress that really, we had several faculties from McCormick and Kellogg really working together, brainstorming and thinking exactly on how uh, to create this. So I am, I am uh, really delighted in welcoming here four faculty members who will not only teach in the program, but they've been 
really having a hand in deciding and in designing it. They've shaped it and they will give you uh, uh, their unique perspective on what the MBI is special. So let me tell you what we have from Kellogg. We have Eric Anderson. He is the RMAX Professor of Marketing and he will be the academic director of the MBAI program. And uh, very befitting, not only exactly as a professor at Kellogg, but is an alum of McCormick. So it really simplifies our, uh, exemplifies our um, partnership. And then we have Brian Uzi, always from Kellogg, who is the Richard L. Thomas Professor of Leadership and Organizational Change the co-director of the Northwestern Institute on Complex System, which is also a, a system that uh, links McCormick and Kellogg, not only those two schools, a lot of school in Northwestern, but again, a sense of a partnership. As we always say at Northwestern, at Kellogg and Northwestern, we are all very cooperative. But Brian has a lot of other titles. He's also a professor of industrial engineering and management science and professor of sociology. And instead from McCormick, we have Christian Hammond, who is the Bill and Kathy Osborne Professor of Computer Science. And finally, Sarah Sood, who is the Chukasian Family Teaching Professor of Computer Science. So welcome you all and thank you for coming. Uh, I want to remind the attendees, you can keep submitting Q&A questions in the Q&A box. And after talking, I will ask a question from uh, there. So uh, Eric, I'll let you turn uh, kick off the panel. Terrific. So thank you so much, Francesca. And uh, on behalf of all the faculty that are on the panel tonight, I think we both would thank Francesca and Julio for having this shared vision for bringing this program to fruition. We were all part of the committee that helped think about, well, what would this program actually become? And so as Francesca and Julio noted, um, you know, we've identified sort of a gap in the marketplace over the last few years that there's tremendous promise in things like artificial intelligence, machine learning, various applications of data analytics in numerous domains, but we continue to see that firms are struggling. And so we've designed this program with an eye towards trying to fill this gap of how do we bridge together sort of the science that's needed and the business side to sort of bring them together in a unique way as we train sort of this next type of MBA student coming out. So to do this, I think our philosophy is that you need to have the uh, core training that you would get in an MBA program at Kellogg, but you also need to get deep into the science. And that's where McCormick plays a huge role of taking students in their curriculum into a deep dive into the uh, science, but also in the Kellogg side, doing a deep dive into the MBA side of things. So I'm going to share with you just a little bit about how we're thinking about the MBA program and how it fits in with MBAI. And so when you join the MBAI program, we, we envision for our students is they'll be completing the full MBA core. So the core classes uh, at, at, with, inside Kellogg, you know, there's roughly eight to 10 classes that our students take in their core curriculum. What we've chosen to do is we've taken four of those classes and we've customized them specifically for the MBAI program. So for example, in my area, which is marketing, we've decided to create a customized course where you'll learn about things like how is segmentation being done differently with techniques like machine learning and artificial intelligence? How are topics like personalization now being improved through the application of artificial intelligence? And so a lot of the core concepts will be the same, but how you're solving these problems with data and analytics and new tools are going to be different. And we're going to say the same thing in our business analytics class uh, at Kellogg, the operations class, as well as the finance class. So those classes are going to be customized in a way to try and create sort of deep connections back to not only the business concepts, but the science concepts and bring them to life for students who will be going through the program. So we have a lot to share over the next uh, you know, few weeks and even tonight about the program in terms of what's going to happen. But that should give you just a rough sense of what's happening on the Kellogg side. What I'd like to do now is turn things over to Sarah, who can tell you a little bit more about what's happening in the core curriculum on the McCormick side. Thank you, Eric. I'd like to highlight two parts of the MBAI curriculum, our technical core and our summer industry immersion. So first, our technical core. Our graduates need to be able to create and optimize machine learning systems. So we will train them not only to use the appropriate toolkits, but also how to wrangle data and be proficient programmers. 
They need to identify new opportunities for AI and industry um, and also use AI to improve business outcomes. So they will study in areas like robotics and natural language processing. They need to lead at the intersection of business and technology. So they're gonna learn the best practices in technical product management and software engineering processes. Second, our summer industry immersion. Um, students will use the Kellogg Career Management Center um, to help them find a 10 week summer internship. Alongside that internship, students will take classes at Northwestern San Francisco campus. Uh, these classes will also be available online for students whose internships are elsewhere. For all MBAI students though, the summer quarter will end with an experience in San Francisco that includes company on-site visits, industry networking events, case competitions, and more. I'll turn it over now to Brian to share some research insights. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for sharing some of your time with all of us this evening. It's really an honor and a pleasure for us to talk about the program with all of you. What I'd like to do tonight in the little time I have is really discuss just three things why I think the MBAI is gonna be extraordinarily valuable to you in your career, how you could help other people build and perfect their careers, and then talk about a little piece of joint research that I think illustrates the tight connections between Kellogg and McCormick, not just at the administrative level, not just the teaching level, but at the level of research. The concept that I'd like to talk about is a concept that I think is absolutely uh, essential to everybody. I call this concept mastery. It's the expertise in a body of knowledge. In fact, everybody comes to school to get expertise. That's where it begins. And we all know that as you develop it and grow it, you become the person that everybody wants. But here is the main issue with mastery today, that AI can solve better than anything, anything else we have out there. And it's basically this. In order to have, maintain that mastery, we have to stay on the frontier of a body of knowledge. And that body of knowledge grows every year, bigger and bigger and bigger. And it grows faster and faster. But all of us have a fixed amount of time to absorb that body of knowledge. So what happens is that as years go by, whether we realize it or not, we begin to see a smaller and smaller fraction of that body of knowledge and our mastery begins to shrink. For some of us, in the end, we all start looking at the world through a little keyhole. And when that happens, we lose vision and our ability to find great opportunities. AI is something that could help human beings overcome their own limitations of consciousness. Let me give you one example from some research that's going on between Kellogg and McCormick. And it has to do with scientists and their body of knowledge and mastery. One of the things all scientists have to do and perfect throughout their careers and always stay on the frontier of knowledge is to know what is the latest knowledge that's out there. But it's harder and harder because it grows so fast. Let me give you a concrete example. So like in medicine, 10,000 papers are published a month. Of the 10,000, 5,000 are ones that uh, are considered important. Of the 5,000, a doctor or a researcher should read 125 of them. Most doctors, yours and mine, can only keep up with five. We're always falling a little bit behind. AI helps with this problem in a very general way. Let me give you a way in which we used it to illustrate how powerful it can be. What we did is we went and we trained a deep neural network to read two million scientific papers. We then trained it to identify those papers that will produce facts and those papers that will produce flukes. Facts are papers that once you have an, a finding, it repeats itself over and over again. It's the thing that makes science strong. Flukes, they work once, but don't repeat themselves. We found that in training a neural network, it was better at predicting what papers would be fact and what papers would be fluke, better than any single scientist could do on their own. And those two million papers that it used to create its mastery was done in a week. Even in a whole career, no human being could possibly read a million papers. We then went a whole step further and we did a horse race between a hundred researchers and a single machine and the machine did predictions as well as a hundred researchers put together. That power can go in many different ways. It may be mastery about science, it could be mastery about patents, it could be mastery about pitch decks, and a whole lot more. What we're doing here at Kellogg and McCormick is we're perfecting these technologies to help advance business. I'll leave you with an analogy that helps me keep uh, in mind everything that we're trying to do here. And the analogy is this, that AI is the second great human technology. The first great technology was fire. Fire changed everything for human beings. It brought warmth to the cold, it brought light to the darkness, it allowed us to develop culture. But guess what? Human beings did that all before they knew anything about the chemical properties of fire. In this program, you will not only learn about the chemical properties of fire, 
You will also learn about its applications. And by putting those two things together, you will be able to make advances that will improve your career, improve the careers of others, and possibly go on to change the world. I do hope you'll see this as well and that you'll be joining us next year in the MBAI program. With those few words, again, thank you for your time. And I'd like to hand it over to my colleague, Chris Hammond over in McCormick. Chris. Thanks, Brian. Um, this is, uh, uh, you might have noticed there's a, a, a fairly high level of enthusiasm here uh, from this group, from everyone you've heard. And the enthusiasm comes from the fact that we're looking at a, a unique collaborative environment, uh, a unique partnership, where from the Kellogg side, from the business side, there's a very real understanding that these technologies are going to be transformational. And from the CS side, from the side where we're looking at a world from the, through the lens of artificial intelligence, we've come to realize that, in fact, the future of computation is outward facing. And so it's an opportunity for us to work together to create something new. Now, this isn't actually new to Northwestern. I mean, Northwestern is, in general, an interdisciplinary place. And in particular, in particular, McCormick has always been driven by this notion of purpose-driven research and, much more recently, uh, this, notion of, this notion of whole brain engineering. And within computer science, within computer science, we have actually accepted the mandate, embraced the mandate of what we call CS plus X that is looking at how all of what we do impacts other fields. So we work with already the medical school, taking a look at things like medical imaging and automating the process of diagnoses. With the law school, taking a look at uh, contract review and being able to actually look at a contract, have assistants that look at contract and understand what's, what's missing and what, is, what needs to be added. And in business, thinking about the world from the point of view of what can be predicted, what can be assessed, how can we look at, at all of our sales and know what's going to happen next? How can we look at a customer and make a decision about whether or not they are or are not qualified? And all of these things really are based upon coming together and creating this unique partnership. The thing that's amazing is that the partnership right now, the, what we're doing right now is unique, but the problems are not. There is a totally ubiquitous set of problems out there where every single company that is worth its salt has turned itself into a data-driven organization. And what we're seeing is the need for these technologies, but not just at the level of let's hire some developers, because if you hire a whole bunch of people who know how to implement, you still need the skills in terms of understanding the business and what to implement and how to actually guide that process. And that's what this program is about. It is combining the business acumen associated with, for quite some time, associated with Kellogg, uh, and the engineering skills that are associated with McCormick, and not just putting them side by side, but integrating them and creating an entire, an entire genre of people, an entire wave of skill that is aimed at being able to look at a business problem, understand how to solve it, um, and then apply the appropriate technologies to do so. And so there is nothing but enthusiasm here because it's unique to us and in fact something that will, be, that will actually be powerful across companies uh, for quite some time. And in the spirit of uh, collaboration, let's, uh, uh, let's actually give this back to uh, Kellogg. So Francesca, I hand it back to you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you all of you, Brian, Sarah, Eric, Chris. That was very interesting. And I've been watching uh, the, the questions coming in, flooding in actually. So let me start uh, with one, to the first one. Dean Cornelli, that is actually me, and Dean Ottino described the MBA program, MBAI program as fully blended. Can you elaborate on what that means? Eric, can you start on that and then other people can chip in? Sure. I, I think what's really unique about this is that we are really trying to take seriously this idea that if we go back to the problems we, that you articulated, Francesca, and Julio elaborated on, part of the challenge is integrating the science with the business. And so we're sort of taking that seriously as we build this program. And on the Kellogg side, we're working hard to collaborate with McCormick and vice versa. And so I think when you look at how that's going to manifest itself in terms of the courses 
what you're going to see is a very integrated curriculum where we will do things where we'll try to offer courses that are highly integrated where you you're going to see Kellogg professors and McCormick professors in the same type of class. So I think it's going to be a highly integrated curriculum as we move forward. Um, and maybe Sarah, you can say a little bit more about what that might look like. I mean, I think you could see um, courses like the best of Kellogg operations paired with the best of McCormick's robotics. Um, you could see things like synthetic biology paired with commercialization and entrepreneurship. So we could see some exciting courses in that, those spaces. Brian, you had anything to add? And yeah, you, you, know, you know, for me, the blending this is really, this program is so unique because it's just breaking down barriers every which way I look. I mean, it's breaking down barriers at the administrative level, it's breaking down barriers at the teaching level, it's breaking down barriers in faculty research, and it's really putting together things that are often not put together in a, in, in a way prior to this program. And it's these new combinations of things that are really going to be the explosion of innovation that's going to come out of this program. And if you're a curious person, if you want to be someone who's going to be brokering boundaries and breaking down boundaries, I think there's no program that's going to be nearly as exciting as this one. Thank In you. my own work, for instance, you mentioned NICO before, which is the Northwestern Institute on Complex Systems. That was actually an institute that was started almost 10 years ago, uh, really with Julio's vision to bring together McCormick and Kellogg and other schools around the university. So not only have, is this blended program in itself unique, but it has a history that gives it a deep foundation and a great head start over all of our competitors. And I think if you put those things together, we really have a one of a kind program that uh, is really gonna be something that will not only change the world, but any student who comes here is gonna expand their own consciousness. Yeah, and a, a, tiny, a, a tiny point here is that Although this program is unique, the, this, this notion of bringing different students together uh, from um, engineering and other schools um, is something that we've been trying, we've really been, been working very hard on over the past few years. Um, uh, with uh, Medill, our journalism school, we have joint project classes where journalists and, journalists and uh, computer science students uh, work together on problems in journalism, journalism with technological solutions. We have a similar class now over at the law school where it's legal problems that actually come to us from the outside that are being addressed by law school students and uh, the students from computer science. And the beauty of it is, is that each side gains so much. That is the law school students, the journalism students understand what it's like to work with people with high levels of computational skill. And for us, for the computer scientists, our students get to actually see how their work can impact things. And that's a tremendous, it's a tremendous foundation on which we can build this program. So can I add something? So it probably looks like yesterday that we founded Nico, Brian, but it was more than 15 years ago. So I have been talking with Brian for about 15 years. I was one of the founders of Nico. And Nico was always a collaboration between McCormick and Kellogg, but involves every corner of the university. Kellogg now has to be one of the best places in computational social science. That would never ever have happened without Brian and I talking and without Nico. The best ideas happen at intersections. And it's just how you pick something that would never have occurred to you had you been talking always with people that look like you. So, this is the beauty of the collaboration. It's not like they keep doing the same thing, but how in minor and major ways our ideas are shaped by discussions with people who are different than us. Julio, has it really been 15 years? Yeah. Wow, it, it's like a good marriage. Time just <laughs> flies. <laughs> but also it shows, right? We've been in this space of blending. We are not inventing it now, right? We are, you, you, we've been in this space. I say we, but I'm the last arrived. But still, we've been in this space as Kellogg and McCormick for a long time. Now, I see now, sorry, Paul, you can, can I say something else? Yeah. By the way, nothing of this would have happened without having Francesca on the Kellogg side. 
okay? Mm -hmm. uh, this has been a dream come through for us, being able to find a partner at that level. You need alignment at all levels, dean to dean, faculty to faculty, and hopefully this will have the consequences that we want, but cannot happen without alignment at the top. Yes, and, and it's great. We can, uh, we can work together. Uh, now, I see a question which says, uh, how will the new program involve alumni? Eric, do you want to start with that? What can the alumni, I guess, means? Can we do love it? that question, Francesca. That's a great <laughs> question for tonight. So uh, I want to thank all the alumni for being here on the call tonight, but uh, there are numerous ways we would love for you to engage with us. So at the corporate level, if you're thinking about, you know, do you have colleagues, uh, peers, there's people that are working, you know, for you that might be ideal candidates to come to the program, we would encourage you to just nudge them to apply um, and talk to us about applying to the program. So we are looking for applicants. Applications are open for the new program. Uh, we, with the first round will be closing soon, and then the second round will be taking place. But we're definitely interested in your help in recruiting new people for the program. I will say that uh, those of us that have been involved in this, Sarah and I have been, been totally excited by the number of applicants who have shown interest and we're very excited about the progress we've made so far on that front. The other way I think another uh, that alumni can, engage, alumni can engage is more personally, we're gonna have numerous opportunities for you to engage either coming and speaking to our uh, students about what's happening in this space and keeping them sort of at the frontier of the challenges you're facing at implementing AI, machine learning, bringing technology into your business, whether it's robotics or other parts of science, you know, where are those pain points and talking about your learnings and being at the forefront with our students. We'll be doing things like having a seminar series throughout the year for the MBA AI program where we can bring in speakers to talk to our students about what's happening. Uh, we'll also be looking for you to engage personally. So if you want to be a mentor of one of our MBI students, we're going to try and create mentorship opportunities as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you can work one on one with one of the uh, students who might be in the program. And so I think at all different levels, whether it's at a personal level and you'd like to have a deep connection with one of the uh, Kellogg McCormick students, or you'd like to have, you know, bring some expertise from your own work experience or even come in as a corporate sponsor. Um, we're gonna have numerous opportunities. Um, and I forgot to mention, we're gonna have a project opportunities uh, that are gonna create this experiential learning component as well. Um, in the capstone quarter, the final quarter um, in the program, uh, we're gonna do deep dives with companies. And then in the third quarter in the spring, we'll also be, do be doing engagements with companies. And so if you're interested in sponsoring those, we would love to talk to you some more. So numerous opportunities for alums to engage and please follow up with us. And, and I can see we are creating excitement because I see a, a, an, an alum of Kellogg who's uh, considering applying for the MBA degree. So clearly we're creating a <laughs> right. sort of uh, excitement. Uh, now, I, I think the question here it says, uh, most if not all the information I've heard and digested over the years around the um, uh, it seems to be focused on very large companies, leading tech companies, uh, you know, it, it's a long question, but let me start to the, get in the question. Have you encountered practical means by which small companies, say less than five mil, 50 million revenues that are in low tech, B2B sectors, harness AI in a way that could add material value internally and relative to its competitors? If so, how can this company tap into such technology? Um. Well, I think I'll, I'll let me let me touch on that. Um, I mean, there is a um, uh, th we live in a world now where no matter how no matter how large your company, you're surrounded by data, a data associated with your industry, data associated with uh, your your company, data associated with how your sales are doing, data that's flowing uh, towards you, uh, having to do with uh, how your uh, what your customers uh, think of of your of your products. Um, you have to make decisions having to do with um, uh, who you're going to hire, um, what customers you're going to go after. For each and every one of those, there are technologies now that can be brought to bear. Some of them are purely on the data side, that is uh, doing the data analysis so that you can actually make predictions or make assessments, uh, making decisions about qualified customers, making decisions about um, uh, resumes as they're coming in. Does this person fit? Um, 
uh, but there are other technologies that are, um, that are really all about um, uh, taking the data that we have and communicating it. Because most organizations struggle uh, with understanding their own data. And it really is AI where you can have both the data layer and a communication layer. That is the system playing the role of, uh, of the explainer. And all of these technologies are, are, they're not commodity by any means. Um, but they're not so complex and, such a, and require such a huge investment uh, that only the largest com companies can, can actually work on them. Larger companies are, are really focused on innovation at the level of the algorithms. But smaller companies now can be looking at things from the point of view of innovation at the level of the applications that can be applied. Uh, and that's where I think we are going to shine. Uh, because other students who are coming out of this, they are not going to be working on the next version of machine learning algorithms. They're going to be thinking in terms of how can these be brought to bear on the problems that surround us. Um, and it's pulling people in like that, um, who can look at your company, even if it's smaller, uh, look at your company and actually help you bring technology to bear. So, Chris, just to add more credibility to your comments. Why don't you comment on the company that you created and who the clients are? Um, so this is, uh, uh, this, by the way, when, when I look at uh, computer science working with other fields, uh, the first real step that uh, I took, in, took it personally uh, was working with Medill, our School of Journalism, and we had a project where we had a whole bunch of data and we wrote stories based upon that data, that is automatically wrote stories based upon that data. Um, and the first stories were in sports, because uh, that was a place where we could get data easily. Um, but we looked at what we'd done, and we realized that we'd actually built um, not so much an, a writer, but we'd built a micro, a small data scientist that could look at data, figure out what's going on, and tell you about it. Um, and in the world of data, that's unbelievably valuable. Uh, and so we pivoted. And we formed a company uh, called Narrative Science about 10 years ago. Um, and Narrative Science looks at proprietary business data. Um, and uh, most, of our, most of our clients are the, the larger banks and insurance companies um, uh, where they, we can take a portfolio. Uh, we can take uh, the fund, the data around a fund that someone is managing and automatically and instantly uh, give you um, a, a portfolio review. Uh, we can do that for individuals as well. Um, but the beauty of it is that any time there's data out there and there's a story, there's information in that data and people are struggling to get that information out, we now have a technology that can take that data and turn it into uh, a narrative. The place where we're shining right now is in fact um, with Salesforce data. So if you have this massive, uh, this huge mass of everything that you've been collecting for, for months and years about how your sales team is doing, how are you going to deal with that? Um, you're going to look at the numbers? No. What you want is you want someone to look at those numbers, figure out what's going on, and tell you about how the different teams are doing, how the regions are doing, how your customers are doing, how the products are doing, who's selling well, who's selling badly. But the people who can do that are few and far between. But you can bring that to the machine, and the machine can do that now. Um, and that's the beauty of, of this kind of technology. That is, it's not just the numbers, it's not just the data, it's bringing the data to humans, humanizing the machine, so we can avoid actually mechanizing human beings. Um, and I, and uh, we're looking to, you know, we'll do the same thing in the law. Um, we'll do the same thing over and over again. And our students are always looking for opportunities to create new products, new businesses, based upon these, these intersection moments. Uh, and uh, we're, uh, I have to tell you, the CS students, because the CS students are going to be inter interacting with the MBAI students, the CS students are unbelievably excited about the idea that they're going to be able to, to partner with people who really understand business well and really understand what the problems are to create this new world we're, build, we're, we're building. So that's a, you know, it's a very important message. Wherever you want to think of thinking of your career, this will, will be, uh, you know, it will be very important. Now, there is a question here saying there's a lot of subfields to AI. You've talked about other technology. How can you learn about all this in five quarters? 
That's a great question, Francesca. I always scratch my head and say, how are we going to do this in five quarters? And it comes, boils down to a simple answer when you step back and look at what Brian and Chris and Sarah and I put together, which is you're going to have to work really hard. So we are going to push uh, students in this program to a level that uh, they will find challenging. Um, it's doable, but they are going to be busy. So we are, what's interesting about this is we found a way to give the same, uh, provide the same amount of material. So you're gonna do the same number of credits as you would in the regular MBA program, but complete this in five quarters. And so what this means is, you know, for example, over the summer quarter, when uh, Sarah described the internship opportunity and Julio mentioned this, you will have a full internship over the summer and you can do it anywhere you'd like, whether it's here in Evanston or go to Silicon Valley or go to Rio, wherever you'd like to do your internship. Uh, but we're gonna have classes at, uh, on Zoom. So we're gonna be using all of this capability we've built up at Northwestern around you know, being able to do remote learning. We're gonna integrate that into the curriculum. And so you'll be taking two classes over the summer and doing an internship at the same time, which means probably one at night and one on the weekends, and uh, you're gonna be working really hard. So I think when you look at this and you say we're finishing in five quarters, it's important to keep in mind that we are gonna not skimp on any of the material. Um, and you're going to be doing a uh, rigorous curriculum, both on the Kellogg side and on the McCormick side. Fantastic. I, I, I see another one. I actually saw two or three uh, on the same topic. Will you integrate the ethics around AI and machine learning? Brian, maybe you want to talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So, you know, I think that that's an excellent question and it really needs to be addressed. And any program would be uh, insufficient without it. And we have spent a lot of time taking what we know about ethics, and Kellogg is one of the leading areas for business ethics, and taking, taking that knowledge and distilling it down and focusing it on the big questions related to AI and ethics. Who should make choices in the system? For instance, should it be the automobile? Should it be the driver? Uh, what sorts of problems are going to be best solved? depending on who's going to benefit and who's not. How do you protect human life and the sanctity of it? How do you uh, make sure that what's, uh, what people are thinking about also help them address before they get into the development of ideas, what the best way to approach them and the best way to solve many of the ethical problems. So I feel we're very solid on this dimension and constantly growing. I, I see, so because this is uh, open to a lot of alumni, I can see a lot of interest for them and several say, will there be able to, to audit or uh, executive education? I mean, audit is going to be difficult, but uh, I, I think this is a unique opportunity to, to, uh, to plug in a bit. We, we are already in that space for executive education, right? And several of you teach in that uh, space and actually, you know, out of this can can do more. Do, you, do some of you want to mention a bit what you do in uh, executive education about this, uh, in this space? Yeah, so uh, I think, you know, Chris and Brian and I have all done a considerable amount of work uh, in training executives in, you know, AI, machine learning, and, you know, how you can transform your organization. Uh, Chris and I have partnered for the last four years now, I believe, working uh, with large companies doing, you know, massive amounts of training, both in person and online. And what's really neat about this is that we're not just doing this training with executives, but we're constantly not only learning from them, upgrading our material that we're teaching to them, but it's also then flowing back into the classroom, into our MBA program. And so it's this uh, really nice feedback loop where you start to see that what's happening for us in one area feeds into another. And I'm guessing we're going to see things that we develop for MBAI go the reverse direction now. You're going to start to see these classes that are integrated and have these cool new ideas. We're going to start to create executive offerings. And so one of the you know, really nice things, if you had to look for a silver lining in the world of COVID, is we are starting to look at much more of these micro executive courses where we don't have to come in for an entire week anymore. We can now deliver virtually you know, a half day seminar or a two half days. And so we're gonna take advantage of that. So I think look, looking at what's coming, you're gonna see a lot more creativity in the Kellogg McCormick space of us taking some of these things and launching them into the exec ed space. Yeah, I, you know, I would add one thing to that, Francesca. I think what Eric is saying is actually quite important because he's developed a course on AI. I've developed one. Chris is actually in both of our courses. 
And we've used that to really develop the kind of material that we think is going to be so valuable in this MBA program. Because once you do the executive programs, you really hear what the market wants and you begin to see what is the most valuable stuff out there. I will also say that these programs are really exciting if you're considering going to them because they attract people from across all sectors and industrial backgrounds. You're going to have consultants, you're going to have finance, you're going to have nonprofits, you're going to have companies that make chocolate. You know, everybody comes to these uh, AI programs to learn more about how they can take that knowledge and bring it back into their own organization. And we're developing more and more and better material the more we interact with the executives themselves. We also do it in a way that, to Eric's point as well, we care about executives' time. We present it in a way where we understand their opportunity costs and an economical and very fundamental and powerful way to do it. And Brian, you, you just reminded me one thing we should definitely mention tonight, which is that, you know, we are looking to build a very, you know, diverse group of students because this is not a, a area where you're going to come in and we're going to be, you know, looking at one particular area where you're applying AI and machine learning. Mm -hmm. So we are looking to bring in students with a broad set of interests that have varied interests not only in the past, but in terms of where they see themselves going in the future. Mm -hmm. And we believe that it's that cross fertilization between people who might be interested in medicine or in law or in, you know, technology, all blending together. That's really going to create some of the magic that, you know, Julio mentioned. It's that that intersection where you see that spark where something really takes off. And so we're hoping that, you know, by having lots of diverse interests in the room, uh, that's what's going to create those conversations in the hallway where, where you say, you know, hey, let's get together and talk a little bit more about this. You've never thought of these two things coming together, mm -hmm. but, you know, you bring them together in a program and they start to find those mutual interests. So I hope that really takes off. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know, in a way, I also want to, to mention the fact that to me, like the triple M students completely mix with our MBA and have a chances to mix. So will these students, so that the MBA AI will be exposed to our triple M students, to our regular MBA student, and, and they will benefit from this. So, so it's really joining, because in terms of student life, uh, co-curricular activities, mm -hmm. they're all together. So that they're joining an even richer part. But even within this, I want to take the fact that Eric mentioned there's a lot of, uh, of diversity, a lot of uh, diverse background. And there's several questions about the technical background required. Uh, Sarah, do you want to talk a bit about that? Absolutely. So um, if you imagine technical background on a scale of, say, one to five, um, top engineering master's programs might require students to enter at a five. We're looking for students more in the middle at a two, three, or four. Um, they're not necessarily senior software engineers, but they have a small amount of programming background. Um, what matters most really though are their interests and their career goals. Do they really aspire to sit at the intersection of tech and strategy? Mm -hmm. and, and again, we have a, a, a tiny bit of a history, a tiny bit of a history in this uh, for the uh, for the master's program in that's just AI, not MBA, but M, the, our MS and AI, um, we um, uh, we realized that it, there were people there were there were people from uh, different fields who really wanted to bring AI to their field, um, uh, but they were having a hard time getting people from AI to actually learn enough about their field to move into it, and so we instituted a program where um, this year we have uh, we have three. Um, cardiology fellows, that is three, three um, students who have um, their MDs in cardiology, um, who we ramped into uh, core skills in programming before they entered the program. Um, and uh, what we found is that if we can get somebody, if we can get somebody to understand programming, the, the concept of computation, um, uh, with a little bit of stats and a little bit of, uh, a little bit of uh, um, um, uh, um, linear algebra, <laughs> Um, they can just shine. Uh, and then they get to go back to their own uh, field, uh, not as, uh, not as you know, day to day developers, but as the people who are going to architect um, and hire those developers. And so they become the bridge. And this model over and over again makes so much sense of creating an entire, a, a new breed of, 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 of worker that is the bridge between whatever the business goals are and the, the technology that can be used to, to satisfy them. 
That's amazing. Now, I have so many questions. I want to mention some questions are very specific about some details and we will come back to you with uh, an answer specifically. Now, I have seen one that I think Brian is down near Ali. We've heard about CX, CSX and other multidisciplinary approaches to education and new and especially NICO. When it comes to say project management and stakeholder engagement, how are we exploring the sociological aspects of getting these disparate parties to work collaboratively? Ah, I guess the word sociology is what made it my question. That's right. I thought <laughs> I'm gonna throw it, I'm gonna spice it up for Brian. <laughs> Well, you, you know, um, let me tell you one of the things that we do in our executive program to address this very question. You know, I talked a little earlier about mastery. And I think one of the things that you really want is you want mastery, but you also want to be able to interact with and be able to lead other people who have greater mastery than you do in any particular topic. And one of the ways in which we help people understand how to do this in the program is I developed a presentation with a uh, conductor, international maestro, on what it's like to lead people who are virtuosos. And every other person is better at what they do than the conductor can ever be on their own. So the conductor doesn't play any instrument as well as anybody in the orchestra and never will be able to. And the conductor helps you see from a perspective on how you're able to motivate and integrate people who have much higher levels of expertise than you to create a, pro a, pr a, a product that none of them could have done on their own without you. And it's a very valuable kind of way to look at this because you know, when you think about music and you think about the enjoyment of a production, it's all about the music itself. But in the end, the conductor doesn't make a sound but still gets most of the credit. And to understand those kinds of relationships, we have the students be immersed into this world and actually go through a process of conducting an orchestra and learning what it's like and how it feels and how you bring out the best in people. And in the course of that, they get to ask a lot of questions of both the experts and the conductor to figure out how they can make that happen in their own life. So we address it through analogy, and then we go back and we practice ways in which they can be better themselves. That's a fabulous answer. And actually, there is- And it's really fun too. Let me just say that. Oh. It is really, really fun. Yeah. I'm so. going to take this course myself. The, the, I'm going to enroll in the MBA <laughs> after this event, I think. Uh, th there's a question here. How will the tech AI courses be designed so that students get a good sense of the tech spaces and opportunities without going into very detailed tech implementation, which takes a lot to ramp up, which is a bit what related to what Brian was talking, right? But in the terms of the courses, can some of you give an idea? Sarah, do you want to take a shot at that? Sure. So you can imagine um, in a machine learning course, um, certain algorithms are very important. The way that we talk about these algorithms in computer science courses, as we talk about, you know, when you might use them, how to use them, and then we build them from scratch, right? It's very different um, from what we'd be doing in a course in the MBAI program. What we care about is actually how you're going to use them, when to use them, and how to make them better. But that requires not necessarily building them from scratch, but actually understanding a little bit how they're working under the hood so that you can optimize them, so that you know what features matter to improve the systems. So we're not necessarily you know, building all of these systems up from scratch, but under, looking under the hood a little bit so that we know how to make these systems better. Yeah, I, th I think, Sarah, that's a great way of explaining it. And, and you know, we share this common philosophy, you and I do, about how to do this. And what's great about this is that you need to know enough about the science, about AI, machine learning, data analytics, whatever it is, to be able to then you know, do that sort of interpretation of what are the requirements from the business side and how do you communicate, just in Brian's previous comments, how do you connect experts in data science or experts in machine learning with experts in the business? They needs to be that connective tissue inside organizations, people that can be that orchestrator, people that create that bridge. And that's sort of what we're trying to do with the curriculum is we're not going to turn you into the world's best programmer in you know, machine learning or AI, right? We're going to make you somebody who's going to be effective at implementing those solutions at a company, right? Which is a very different philosophy. 
Yeah. And, and even if you're not going to end up spending uh, your day to day uh, doing development work at the level, at the code level, um, you're going to be working with people who are doing development work at the code level. And part of what we're, in, we're envisioning in this program is uh, this ongoing set of partnerships. Uh, so that if you're if you're in a if you're in a if you're in a class that's coming from the from uh, McCormick, that is aimed at the application of of deep learning techniques for image processing, there are going to be other students there as well, um, and those students will actually be doing the down in down in the dirt nitty gritty work uh, at the pure algorithmic level, while you're doing other work, but you're making decisions about um, how this should be how this should be manage how it should be imp how it should be implemented what kind of uh, final system uh, is going to be deployed who is going to be working with it and all of those are questions which are important questions but are not the questions that immediately come to mind um, from a purely algorithmic point of view and it, again it's that partnership and and the the blending of those minds that actually makes this uh, you know a useful way a powerful way uh, to uh, to train people very interesting. I, there are so many questions. I don't know. Uh, I, actually, I should. There is a very simple question: is asking whether this MBA will be a STEM, and and the answer is yes. So let me just answer straight that. Now, there's a question here: what will be, which just disappeared from my, uh, what will be the balance between applying cutting edge technologies versus understanding where simpler more interpre interpretable models are appropriate? I'll, 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 I'll tell you a, um, uh, a rule of thumb for, the, um, uh, for our master's students in, in just AI. They're not allowed when they describe what they're doing to lead with the technology. Um, what they, they're not allowed to say, well, I'm using machine learning too. Um, they have to say, I'm, I'm building, I'm build, I want to be able to predict sales. I want to be able to, um, I, I want to be able to evaluate what a customer feels about our product. I want to be able to track sentiment. Um, I want to be able to understand these things because they're good for the business. And by the way, I'm going to be using this machine learning technique to build the model. Um, and the notion here is that you always lead with the business. You always lead with the problem. And then if, you, if you've got a problem that is so complex that you have to develop something absolutely new and innovative that has never existed before, then so be it. But for the most part, um, there are going to be not quite commodity, but borderline commodity solutions that you can grab hold of and make use of. And if you get that in your bones, that your job is to solve the problem, not to just explore a space, um, that's a huge difference in terms of what you're able to do in this world. So this is phenomenal. And I have still tons of question, uh, questions. We'll email you answers because I just received the reminder that we are unfortunately at the end. But uh, Sarah, Brian, Eric and Chris, thank you. I am uh, sure that everybody who heard is getting very excited. As I said, I want to take it myself. Will you, will you take it with me, this course? We can just take the course <laughs> with you together. Uh, and uh, now I just want to conclude by thanking you all. You know, the MBA really, we feel it's a unique program. It's the first of its kind. It's uh, very innovative and it's, it's, it's launched by two world-class schools at Northwestern in a very critical moment. Um, I'm, incredibly, uh, I'm incredibly grateful uh, to everybody involved and, uh, and to Julio for partnering with me. Julio, do you want to say something also to end? Well, I, I should say that we are equally thankful and enthusiastic, Francesca. And although it's hard to summarize everything in one sentence, let me attempt that. So through this program, the MBAI, Kellogg and McCormick will offer students a distinctive world-class education and a unique framework to drive impact in this increasingly driven, technology-driven world of ours. Uh, in some senses, to learn things, but also to get a glimpse of what's possible. 
And I believe we are breaking new ground in here and no doubt we will be imitated and copied, but I'm really enthusiastic about what we are doing. Yes, and, and I, I think, yeah, you know, what you said is true. I mean, people will try to imitate, but the, the, the collaboration is essential, right? That's because as, as you heard from everybody, they, they know each other. And, and, and if you can't do that, you can't deliver a program like the one we do. But to all of our attendees, if you know any prospective students for this degree, please help us to share the, stu the, the, the news. Uh, I, I saw a lot of people who are set, were looking very interested. We'll send more uh, information. And uh, for the rest of the fall, we'll, we'll continue in this series on our exploration of AI and technology. So if you're interested in this space, please stay tuned for more details for the follow-up. In the meantime, thank you all for joining us and uh, have a wonderful you know, rest of the day or the, the night, depending on where you are. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.